We're learning to be tool safe. Watch this video to find out the safety guidelines for this tool. We're looking at the correct handling of a curling iron. Before using any hot tool, always inspect the cords for any fraying or damage. Never leave a hot tool unattended while it is hot. It can fall off a stand, a counter, or someone may touch it by mistake, knocking a cord and getting a burn. Professional trade curling irons don't always have an automatic time turn off, or may malfunction and overheat dangerously when left plugged in for long periods of time. You can also review the manual that comes with your classroom tools to know its unique settings. Once finished, never unplug the hot tool by pulling on the cord. Remove the plug from the outlet. When you begin using the curling iron, remember to stand directly in front of the area of the head that you are working on and wear safe shoes. This ensures that how you work is ergonomically correct for your body, but it also ensures that you have full control of the hot tool and its position on the hair. And always remember the three areas of the client's head that are most likely to get burnt, the nape of the neck, the ears, and the forehead. When using the curling iron around these three areas, always pull the hair out at a 90 degree angle from the head. This will ensure that the curling iron doesn't accidentally rest on the skin and can prevent a burn on the client. Before you begin curling, you must properly section the hair. The section of hair that you should be working with should be the same size as the end of the curling iron. For example, if you are using a one inch curling iron, your section of hair should be one by one. This will give you more control of the hair and guarantee a better end result. Once you've created your section, holding the curling iron vertically, open the clamp and position the hair around the curling iron. Close the clamp. While holding the ends, gently turn the curling iron until all the hair is wound around the iron and the ends are tucked under the clamp. You should not hold the ends against the curling iron. This can cause severe burns on your fingers. The end should be held in place by the clamp. Don't forget to place your tail comb at the base of the hair and hold it between the curling iron and the scalp. This is essential when curling hair. And do not leave the hair on the curling iron for longer than 10 seconds, as this can cause permanent damage to the hair. Once it has been curled, with your curling iron still held vertically, open the clamp and allow the hair to fall from the iron in a spiral curl. In the event that you accidentally burn yourself or the client, inform your teacher immediately and follow the procedure for an accidental burn. Immediately run cold water over the affected area. If that's not possible, use a clean, wet linen and hold it on the area until the temperature has gone down and the pain has subsided. This will stop it from blistering. If it does blister, do not break it. This can cause infection. Also, don't put any ointments or lotions on it. All you need to do is get a sanitized, lint-free bandage from the first aid kit and cover the burn. Use tape to hold the bandage in place, but make sure not to put the tape on the burn. That'll hurt. Also, consider that sometimes it's just better to let it air. And be sure to seek medical attention for severe burns or if you experience unusual discomfort. Let's do our tool safe review. Evaluate any hazards in your workspace. Plan how you'll be moving around. Ergonomics. Check electrical cable safety. Unplug properly. Inspect the working condition of your tool. Don't leave hot tools unattended. No emergency and accidental burn procedures. Clean your workspace and disinfect. Store the curling iron properly after a safe cooling period. And if you're not sure about anything for safety, ask your teacher for more direction. And don't forget to be tool safe.